Hey, good morning, everybody. So glad you're in church today. Are you glad to be in God's house? Come on. Hey, I want to take, take a moment to thank all of you joining us at all of our locations, congregations, Life Family. We are one church in multiple locations. want to welcome our Life Austin downtown location, also our Life Marble Falls, Life Dripping Springs, Life Family Online Congregation. So glad you're joining us today. And as always, Life Austin Southwest. Good to see you in person today. Hey, we're starting a new series uh, called Make It Louder. Brian, what am I making louder? Thanks for asking. We are going to be talking about over these next few weeks just about some of the things and principles and promises in God's Word that we can make louder than some of the noise around us. Maybe I can say it like this. Maybe some of the noise going on inside of us. The things that go on in our world, things that are happening right now can so easily distract us, can so easily create static that we don't hear God clearly, that we don't live for God the way we know we should because we get distracted, we get derailed. And we're talking today, I'm going to talk to you today about some things in our life in God's word that he wants to see in our life to help move us forward. I can assure you this doesn't matter where you are in life. God wants you to thrive. God's plan is for you to thrive in any environment, any situation, any circumstance. You can fill in your blank. I am living right blank in my life, right here. Where's your here? I want to tell you today that God has a plan for you to flourish, to increase, to blossom, Whatever makes you feel warm and fuzzy on the inside, God wants you to thrive right here, right now. And I want to take a, take a look at some scripture, some verses in, in Philippians in just a moment. I'm going to set it up for us where Paul is writing to the, the church. He's writing to the church at Philippi, and he's encouraging them because they're in a season of a little bit of, they're facing some opposition. They're facing some things that they didn't plan for. Can I get a witness for that? They're walking through a season that they didn't invite. I don't know about you, but my 2020 looks a lot different than I planned in January. Oh, help us, Lord. Or I should say, help me, Lord. <laughs> just be truthful. That's the way I feel right now. Just help me, Lord. Get me, get, where are we right now? And I want to share some things with you today that's hopefully going to encourage your heart as Paul's encouraging these believers, these followers of Jesus on how to thrive right where they are. God wants that for you and I. Let's take a look at Philippians chapter 1, starting with verse 8. And it says this, God, God knows how much I love you and long for you with the tender compassion of Christ Jesus. Paul started the church in Philippi. He has a dear affection for them and care for them. And so he says, because of that, that love I have for you, I pray that your love will overflow more and more. And that you will keep on growing. Growing in the middle of this season? Yep, that's God's plan. That's my prayer. In knowledge and understanding. I want you to understand that what really, excuse me, I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation. The righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ, for this will bring much glory and praise to God. Here's what Paul was telling the Philippians. Listen, I know you're in a season that's uncomfortable for you. I know you're, you're facing things that you didn't plan for, you didn't expect. You never would have welcomed if you had the choice. But here's what I can tell you, that God has a plan for you to still grow, that you can actually increase more and more, more on top of more. You can actually flourish in a season that's uncomfortable for you. Ooh, getting too close to home, I can tell. My wife's amening over here on my left. But God has a plan for you right here that you can continue to grow. And that's what Paul's saying. And, and here's how you do that. You, you can grow by, look, focusing on what really matters. I want to encourage your heart. What really matters in this season right now? And he said, ultimately, when you get some traction and you, you focus yourself, you align yourself 
on really the main things that need to be happening in your life, not getting distracted on all the, all the noise around you, then your life is going to give glory. It's going to be a praise to God. I know if you are like me, you want that kind of life. You're saying, hey, I don't want to just go through this season and just trying to survive and not knowing how to feel about this or how to navigate that. You are probably in a position that I find myself in. And many of the people I talk to right now is, hey, how do we get through this season on the other side and not have regrets and not just survive it, but really thrive? Well, I'm going to talk to you over the next few minutes. If that's your heart and that's your prayer, we're going to talk about how to begin that process, how to start that journey. How do we go from here to there? How do we get from feeling discombobulated, what's up and what's down, to a place where we're truly thriving in the things of God, the purposes of God? First thing we've got to do if we're going to get there, starting here, is we've got to accept where we are. We've got to accept the reality that things are happening that we can't control. I know that may make a little make some of you uncomfortable. You can't control everything. There are seasons and there are things, circumstances that are going to happen in our life and probably are happening for you that you can't control. And you've got to accept that. Otherwise, you'll be living in this false reality, not facing the facts and not facing what really is. And you're, you're living in this fantasy land of like, well, I'm going to wake up and this will all be over. Anybody said that recently? <laughs> I don't know if I've said it as much as I've just plead with God, please let me wake up and some of this be over. Well, you know what? For me, that created frustration. It's created a sense of insecurity because I haven't just accepted the way life is right now. And this, as soon as I said, okay, God, I'm going to embrace, I'm going to stop stiff arming what's happening and I'm just going to embrace it and say, here's where I am. This is what's going on. I need you, God, in the middle of this. Until you accept the reality, you can't accept help from anyone else, let alone accept help from God. It may be a, the noise may be in, in our nation, as it is, that it's affecting you negatively. It may be in your home. It may be in your job. It may be in your heart. But all of us are facing things now that we just need God's help in our life. And as soon as we embrace it, accept it, progress can begin in our life. Let me tell you, uh, let me tell off on myself just for a moment. Is that okay if I do that? Thank you for one person that's not too scared. Sure, embarrass yourself, Brian. Here I go. High school, uh, didn't grow up hunting uh, a whole lot. Uh, I, I knew of it. and liked the outdoors. One of my closest friends, Micah, his dad wanted to take us guys uh, hunting one, one weekend we're in high school, and he, he sends us, he lets us know when we're going to be there. I stay the night at their house. We stay up late. Uh, we're all excited talking about what we're going to, you know, we're just guys in high school, right? We get up the next morning. Uh, before God even woke up, we were in a car driving to some land out in the middle of nowhere. Like four in the morning, we're driving, and then we're in this car, and I'm so tired. And, uh, uh, but we're, you know, we, we stop and get these cheap gas station biscuits and chocolate milk. It's just like, you know, just that, it's awesome. We get there. I have no idea where I am. We get out of the car. And I, again, I've got all this stuff they told me to put on. I just put it on. Here's your gun. I'm like, okay, let's roll. And so we take off through this woods. It's, and let me paint this picture for you. Ready? It'll be really simple. Black. It was just black. Couldn't see a thing. I'm like, are y'all sure you know where we are? And this little, little flashlight in front of us say, this guy, of all things, the, the, the guy leading us, the friend of the dad, his name was Buzz. And Buzz was like, come on, boys, let's get out of here. We're just walking through the woods. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm glad I trust you guys. So we get out, we get out in the woods, and I've just been following him. And all of a sudden, he shines a flashlight. He does this little circle. He says, see this right here? There's some trees around you. Just sit down here, young man, and lean against this tree. And when the sun starts coming up now, you got to pay attention. Listen, be real still. And, you know, and I'm okay. I'm taking notes. I'm going to do everything you told me in the, in the 10-hour car drive. I felt like coming down here at 4 in the morning. I'll do it. So I lay there, I sit there, and as the sun starts coming up, it's cold. I start looking around, and man, all of a sudden that four o'clock alarm, that four o'clock alarm just starts making my eyelids burn. I start squinting. I'm like, God, trying to shake off the sleepiness. Next thing you know, I woke up to the most beautiful morning you'd ever seen. 
birds chirping, squirrels running across the limbs in front of me. I thought, man, this is wonderful. I love nature. So much so that I decided I'm going to explore it a little bit while I'm out here. I, I'm not going to shoot anything. I don't see anything. So I get up and I thought, man, I'm going to just, just explore a little bit. So I, I had some tissue, my, a napkin from my, my breakfast, my chicken biscuit. So I pull it out and I hang it on this limb because I don't know where I am, right? So I'm like, this is going to help me keep my bearings, stay calibrated, if you will. I, so I hang it in the limb and I took off to my, to my, to my right and I looked back, okay, I'm good. I'd go and I saw this great little opening. Oh, that's beautiful. I went back to my, to my napkin, my tissue hanging there. And I was like, man, I'm gonna go this way a little way. So I'd take a little while, I'd look back, okay, still there. I'm, I know where I am, it's all good. I'd come back and I got, a, in fact, I got a little, just barely lost sight. And I thought, oh yeah, living on the edge. Where's my tissue? I walk back and I get back to my little, my little clearing there. And I thought, I sat there for about another 20 minutes. I'm like, man, I'm, there's nothing out here. It's just me and these birds and squirrels. I'm, gonna, I'm going this way now. And so I take off. And I keep looking back. I'm looking back. I can see my little tissue hang. And I was like, okay, it's right there. If I just, and I like pick the tree up. If I just go to that tree and I can come right back here, I'll be able to see my, my tissue. So I walk out there. Wow, this is beautiful. And I look back. I'm like, I better get back. They may come looking for me soon. And I go back. I'm like, now, this is where I was supposed to. Where's that tissue? And then that tree looked like the other tree. And I started walking, I'm like, now I think I passed that stump already. And I kept walking, next thing you know, I found that same stump again. I passed the same stump five times. An hour and a half later, I'm literally starting, my heart's beating fast. I'm thinking, God, are they going to have to send a helicopter after me? Like, are the dog, the, 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 the hounds are going to have to, I'm lost. I had no idea where I was. In fact, I had, I really had this realization, I've really messed up now. And just about that time I'm, I'm, I'm realizing I'm lost, I see something across this field, and it's orange. Hey, that's an orange vest like I have on. And so I kind of step out of the trees, and I thought, what if he thinks I'm a six-foot-three deer? <laughs> so I took off my orange hat, and I'm just like stretching, ah, oh, flashing that orange, like, hey, here I am. And I thought to myself, this guy's going to be so mad I'm walking through his field while he's hunting. So I kind of walk off along the tree line. And I'm thinking to myself, I, it's so embarrassing. I don't want to have to go over and talk to this guy. I have no idea who it is. And I thought to myself, you know what? You just need to accept the fact that you don't know where you are. You've got to, I'm literally telling myself, this is self, nothing like good self-talk, y'all. I'm walking across this field going, this is, I, man, I just... I've got to go ask him where I, I've got to get help. I feel silly, a little embarrassed, out in the middle of these woods. I said, like, I got to go. I don't know. This could be God helping me. So I stop, turn back around. I start walking across this field, waving my hat. <laughs> don't shoot me. And I get about 20 yards from this guy, and literally my face is red. I just, I'm so embarrassed. I know this, I'm going to have to face the music here. And I hear this one word. Brian? Gil! It's Micah's dad. And it was like this slow-mo movie moment where I just take off across the field. I love you! He comes down out of this tree and we embrace. I was like, man, I was so scared. I didn't know where I was. He said, man, I've been watching you walk in circles for over an hour. He said, what were you doing? I said, I don't know. I had a napkin and I took a step and I saw a tree and then the stump five times. <sighs> I got help. I didn't understand where I was. I didn't know how I was going to get out of there. But you know what? I found the one who could get me out of there. And it was until I accepted the fact that I really was in need of help. I really couldn't control. I really didn't have all the answers in that moment. I really was out of sorts. I was feeling lonely. I was feeling discouraged until I accepted the fact that I needed help. I want to tell you, you, it's okay to accept where you are. It's okay to accept that you're hurting. Maybe you feel lonely. Maybe you feel disconnected. You accept that. That's where the, the help begins. And God could actually be using this season for you to turn to him and say, God, I need help thriving in this season. I need help growing and producing spiritual fruit. I need you right here. I want to tell you, just because you don't understand doesn't mean you can't call out to him. That doesn't mean he doesn't. He's sitting in the tree stand. 
of your life, and he's watching you go in circles like, just please, it's over here. Here's the orange, right? I, I'm for you. The, the disciples asked Jesus a similar, had a similar moment with him. He was trying to do something for them in their life, and they didn't understand that. In fact, they were trying to get out of it. Looked, they were being a little silly, particularly Simon Peter. He's like, I don't want to do this. And Jesus said, look, look, look trust me. You've got to trust me. And this is, what he, this is his response to John 13. He said this. Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I'm doing? Oh, but someday you will. Someday you will. I want to encourage your heart right now. You may think God is not in the middle of what's going on. You may think you're abandoned and forsaken. You may have seen the same stump five times in a row. God's got his eye on you. And if you'll let him, he'll work something in you. He'll work something around you that one day you'll look back because you trusted him when you didn't understand. You'll look back and say, aha, I get it now. I get it, God. Thank you that you were with me in the middle of that. If we're going to thrive, we've got to accept. If we're going to move forward, we've got to accept where we are right now so that God can help us move forward. He knows the way out of this wilderness. The second thing is we're going to, we've got to accept and then we've got to begin to adapt. We have to adapt our approach. We have to adapt our mindset and our attitude to where we are right now. We can't keep trying to live like we're somewhere else. We can't keep trying to act like things around us aren't happening. If you've got a relationship issue, let's don't, don't act like you don't have an issue. Let's talk about the issue. Don't go in circles. It, it, it's, you're going to end up feeling silly. You're going to make it hard for yourself. Accept the fact, God, I need healing in this season. We need restoration in this season. Because what you're going to find is you're going to have that moment where he's going to call your name. The heavens are going to open and you're going to feel all of a sudden, oh, great. He's been here all along. And then you get to do that slow-mo run across the field and embrace Okay. It's part of God's plan. He wants you to thrive, and you've got to accept it. And the moment you do, you've got to begin to adapt the way you're approaching life, the way you're impro- approaching the people in your life. You've got to adopt new methods, new way of acting, new way of thinking, maybe a new way of speaking in your life. So let me ask, ask you this question. What does thriving look like? right here, where you are. Think about where you are emotionally. Think about where you are mentally. Where are you spiritually? Where are you relationally? Where are you in your life? And I want you to begin to think about, maybe you should ask this question of yourself. What what, what does thriving look like right here? What does it look like if, okay, this is where I am. This is not where I want to be emotionally, mentally, physically. Spiritually, what can you do right here? What can you change? What can you modify in your heart and your life that says, okay, I'm going to embrace where I am, but I'm not going to stay here forever. God's got a a different posture for me. God's got a different paradigm for me. How do I step in to the things of God right here, right now? What does that look like for you? Because when you start taking steps towards him, all of a sudden things are going to start coming together for you. You're going you're gonna to feel the sense of clarity and a sense of peace. A sense of confidence is going to come over you. And you're going you're gonna to feel the hand of God coming around you, coming alongside of you. You're going to feel him supporting you in the middle of this mess, in the middle of the chaos, the noise. All of a sudden, you're, you're going to begin to tune things out. And you're going to do what Paul said. You're going to find out what really matters. You're going to begin to make decisions on what really matters to your life, to your family. You're going to begin to interact with emotions that really are important and pertinent to your relationship being healthy. You're not going to allow the, the distractions and the noise to derail you. What really, what really matters right now? And God's going to make all these things begin to work together for your good. This is why we're talking about his promises. Romans 8, 28. He gives it to us very clear. He said this, and we know this, we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them, according to his purpose for you. It didn't say he would cause all things. There are things happening in your life right now that he didn't do. Sometimes God gets credit for things he didn't. Like, I'm good. That's you. You got it. But what I can do is I can take that 
And I could take my purpose and my plan, my promises, and I could package those things together and I can make something very beautiful out of something very bad. That's his plan for you. He wants to make good out of bad in your life. Whatever it is that you're facing, whatever it is, listen, we're all in this one thing I know together (laughs) called this pandemic. And there are effects that it's having on our hearts and our lives. And I'm here to encourage you as as part of the the people that pastor and love you to say, hey, we understand this is not the norm. We don't get to just wake up and all this be over. We, but we do believe, just like Paul was writing to the church in Philippi, you can still thrive. You can still grow. You can still produce spiritual fruit. You can still abound in love more and more in your life. You can come out on the other side of this and God get the glory and the praise because your life matters to him. You have a purpose in this season. The worst thing you can do is just settle. Just settle and say, well, I just, just, I want to survive. No, no, no. God doesn't want you to exist. He wants you, you to excel. He wants you to move forward in this season. Newsflash, we don't get to wake up and it's all over. Let's embrace this season. Let's embrace where we are. And let's, let's be the kind of people that, that thrive right where we are. Paul knew this all too well because as he was writing to the church in Philippi, they may have forgotten this, but Paul has not. Because when he showed up with a word, of, word from God in his heart, to share the gospel and the good news in this region to these people. He showed up and the first thing that happened was God gave him confirmation. When he shared the gospel, a heart was turned to the Lord and they gave their life over and her name was Lydia. It was like this confirmation moment to where it's like, okay, I'm in the will of God. And I can just imagine if Paul, if I, if Paul was any kind of a human man like I am, it just feels good when you get confirmation, like doing the right thing. God is honoring this. And he began to move forward in this mission, began to move forward and sharing the word of God. And the next thing you know, the scripture actually says someone began to follow him around and and point out things that they were doing and turning other people against them, criticizing them. And it's like, what? I'm doing the right things. How can you make this wrong? Trust me, it can happen. And then that leads to the the right people getting mad at Paul and Silas. And next thing you know, he finds himself being beaten. And then next thing you know, the beating leads to being jailed, being shackled, put in jail. Here Paul is, talk about noise, talk about distractions, talk about things that you wouldn't have chosen for a season of your life. Talk about things going well and like, where did I take a wrong turn? Paul finds himself sitting in the jail cell, shackled. He had a choice to make. He could just shrink back, well, I'm in prison. I'm in jail now. I got these chains on. I guess I should just, just see if I can just do my time and get out. You know what? Paul said, you know, no, no, no. God, I can thrive right here in this jail cell. I can flourish. I can still do the things of God right here where I am. And Paul began to do what we're talking about. He began to make the things of God louder than the noise around him. In fact, I like to say it like this. Paul turned it up. And this is what we've got to do. we got to turn it up. Anybody turned up today? I don't even, don't go there, Brian. <laughs> Paul began to turn up the right things in the wrong place. He began to turn up the right things when he had all the wrong things going on around him. He began to pray and to praise him and Silas. In fact, here's what it says in Acts 16. This is where he's sitting in the jail cell. It says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. Why would you do that? You're in jail. This is not the right place. Nope. Every place is the right place to to flourish, to thrive, to put God first. It said, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. What? Everybody began to hear. They were getting so, they were so loud that the other people could begin to hear. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Next verse. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Listen, I want to encourage you right here that when you begin to make God louder, than the distractions and the noise around you, 
This is always going to be bigger than just you. Paul decided, hey, I'm going to begin to, to thrive right here. I'm going to begin to praise God. I'm going to begin to sing God's praise in the middle of something that I did not want to be in. In something that is not comfortable, something that is not welcome for me. But you know what? If I know my God, he can cause me to thrive right here in the middle of this. And he began to worship. He began to sing praises. And listen, all of a sudden, the clanking of the chains, the snoring of a, of a guy in the cell next to him, and, and the, the, the discouragement he, had to, he could have felt in his heart, the thoughts of, God, are you here or not here? Uh, the loneliness, the, 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 hurt, the pain of his, of his physical wounds. Maybe the potential, the, the pain of his spiritual wounds being rejected after he brought good things. He's bringing good news to these people. All of a sudden, that noise was gone, and he made the main thing the main thing. And he began to pray, and he began to praise to God. Lord, you are greater than this change, and you're greater than this prison. Lord, I may not feel good, but that doesn't mean you're not good. You are great, God. You are greater than any trial that I would face. God, even in the midst of problems, I can have peace. I can have the power to overcome. Lord, even in the midst of confusion, Lord, I feel a stillness, a stability coming. Lord, I praise you. I worship you above every other voice, every other distraction. I put you first. And all of a sudden, all the other guys start saying, hey, what's going on over there? What's going on? And the, shake, the shaking began to happen. The rattling began to, all of a sudden, the, the praise began to, the, the, got, the, the chains got louder and louder. And it says that all the prison doors were open. The, the walls fell of that, of that jail. I want to tell, to you, tell you, I propose to you, if you can find it within yourself to make God louder, to make your praise louder than any problem you have, any distraction you have, you're not only going to set your heart free in this season, you're going to have the ability to affect everybody around you. Your family can see that victory. Your coworkers can experience that victory. Your church can experience that victory. Does anybody want to thrive right where they are? Right here. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back into a song. We have the Katinas. Why wouldn't we go back into a song? <laughs> but here's where I want to encourage your heart. God is sitting right now in the tree stand of your life. He's watching you. He sees you down there trying to figure it out. He knows we're right where you are. He feels, listen, we have a Savior who's been touched by the feeling of your pain and your infirmities. He hasn't abandoned you. He's watching you from a place that he can get you out of there. He knows how you got in. He, can, he knows how to get you out. Listen, I, 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 wanna, I, just, I wanna take a moment here, God. I just want you to know I'm not just preaching to preach. I feel very passionate for you right now. This is a fight moment for some of you where some of you wanna throw your hands up and you wanna give up and you just like, I, I'm just done with all of this stuff. No, no, no. I'm telling you the fact that you're alive, God's not done with you. And that should be enough passion. That should give you enough courage to say, it's all gonna be all right. I wanna tell you, stop asking how you can get out of this and just start saying, okay, God, I'm gonna praise you in the middle of this. I'm not gonna wait till it's over to praise you. I'm gonna praise you right here in the middle of it. The band, oh, these, these things are uncomfortable. These chains, the, 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 the bars, they're discouraging. But I'm going to praise anyway. I'm going to thrive right here. I'm accepting the fact I didn't do anything wrong to get me in this thing. But I can tell you I'm going to do the right things until I get out of this thing. And you can, your praise right now can be the, the distinction between you and anyone else in your life. I'm going to settle down just for a second because I'm telling you, I feel this. Your heart... Your life is too important to give up right now. Your life is too important to give up right now. God has a plan and a purpose for you. And some of you are going to make a decision today. I hope all of you will, that I'm going to thrive right here. Listen, if you're sitting in your living room, it's time to make everybody in the house hear your praises. Because you're going to have the opportunity right here, right now, to say, I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to pull back. I'm going to lean in. I'm going to rise up and believe God for this very best in my life. Is anybody in agreement with me today? We hope you've enjoyed our online content. 
If you're not part of a local church, we want to invite you to be part of our family. Whether you're watching here in Austin or somewhere else around the globe, we consider you part of the Life family. Make sure to come back, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out our new videos each week.